it is necessary that we must make it explicit the rise and debtor of the higher life institute, HLI. What is the stand for? We would like to say that the emblem of the HLI, which you can see on the banner, lotus opening its heart to the sun, rising sun, and the one line statement which says, exploring application of universal brotherhood of humanity. This emblem and this one line statement encapsulate the whole message, object, and philosophy of HLI. Now, universal brotherhood all admire the idea, but most people think it is not practical to apply in our daily life in this world of competition. In fact, they titled the idea of universal brotherhood, the ideal of universal brotherhood, both can be misleading. The idea may refer to something fictitious, the ideal may be misconstrued as some utopian, unattainable ideal, unattainable thing, but neither of the two ideas are true. We say universal brotherhood is a fact of existence. It is a fundamental truth of the universe. In fact, very few understand it. Many, th many things need to be fictitious. The truth is this that humanity is one great brotherhood by virtue of the fact that physically and morally is constituted of the one and the same spirit substance, eternal and uncreated. To the extent that we rise to the perception of it, to the extent that we make true progress and there is harmony in the world, in society. And if mankind do not become universal brotherhood intellectually also, in thought and action, mankind will remain a mere superior genus of animal and no more. Man is not a risen animal, as Darwinians would say. He is a celestial being called descended on earth. This is the truth of the ancient teachings. It takes a god to become a man, which explains the impossible gulf between man and animal. Man is a product of threefold evolution, physical life, intellectual or manic life, and the spiritual, the three streams converging in him and make him a very complex being. The woof of threefold being of man, the microcosm, is woven on the warp of threefold being of universal macrocosm. So that the two constitute a web of seamless web of life. This is inner reality, which we may not perceive whether we recognize it, recognize it or not, whether we know it or not, this is a fact. Such that universal brotherhood is a dynamic reality. It cannot be demonstrated so easily on empirical lines, but it is a question of certain perception. And it is to the certain perception that we have to direct our mind to awaken our consciousness to this higher reality. And that's where the solution to all the problems of the world lie. So no individual can harm another individual, no nation can behave in a way that harm other nations without affecting itself adversely and retarding the progress of all, bringing about chaos. So it's only when all the nations, sects, religions become brotherhood in reality, there is no way of uh, finding any lasting solution to 
the problems that afflict society. So it is lack of perception of this is a cause of the tragedy of the world and the horrors which uh, you know we have been witnessing throughout history and no one can deny that condition is so bad environmentally, ecologically, in character. What is the brink? There is no political solutions or constitutional amendments can bring about a change. Not social engineering can accomplish what perception, understanding and conviction of the fact of universal brotherhood is recognized and acted upon. So it is a question of freeing the mind from narrow conceptions, wrong ideas, based on the sense of separateness that we feel, I am different, you are different, the sectarian differences, all come from this wrong ideas based on sense of separateness. So it is a question of drawing the mind to the higher truth. The Book of the Golden Precept says that seeds of wisdom cannot grow in airless space. It needs breadth of vision, depth of insight, and points in the sense of apprehending the truth of the dynamic reality of the unity of self, the unity of nature from that part of departure to translate the vision into our thinking and action. This transformational action. This, this is the only way that it brings about a change in the individual, brings about a change in the society and in the world. So this is the meaning of the symbol. Lotus opening his heart to the rising sun. It is the lotus of the heart, human heart, opening its petal to the vivifying rays of the spiritual sun, Vivaswan. So this is the line of higher evolution of man, higher evolution of humanity. So one of the objects of the Indian world culture, <coughs> which is mentioned in our MOA, is to raise the national, social, international issues and problems to this higher plane for clearer vision of loftier perspective. And with that clear vision, you will be able to resolve all the issues and perceive the line of right action, the line of higher, higher evolution. This is what Higher Life Institute aims to carry out in its program to the best of the people who are working for it. Now, what point to be mentioned is why today we have selected August 11 selected for inauguration of the HLI. August 11 is a very important day for us. It was on this day in 1831 that Madame H. P. Blavatsky who led the vanguard of the geosophical movement of 19th century was born in the Ukraine province of Russia. She was on that, it was on this day in 1942 that Varyaji founded the United Lodge of Theosophists, the sister institution to IWC on Hemant Krishna Rao Road, housed in a building called Maitri Bhavan, Friendship House. And again on this day, 1945, that body has founded the Indian world culture whose above the ideal is universal brother. It's a body has always stressed on the members to 
get a knowledge of other religions other than your own and take a vow to practice universal brotherhood in your life. This was his message. You must uh, bear this in mind and, uh, and promote the idea, the idea of universal brotherhood in practical terms. So HNI is there to support the idea of the Focusing especially on this aspect, Mr. Nagaraj, Secretary of the IWC, is doing a wonderful work. He has, in fact, introduced some dynamism in our programs. So, we would like to help him and add this element also in this to make it uh, more vibrant and truer to the vision of the founder of the Institute. <coughs> Now, with the permission of the president of the function, I request the deputy, deputy to the dais to uh, light the lamp.